to start, I have my sheet of metal. I also have my pattern. In this case, we are going to be using 0.8 millimeter, which is approximately 20 gauge. So that's what we want to use for both pieces of the ring. Now here you'll see that I've glued one piece, well, I've glued them both down, but I've already started to cut out the first piece. Now the one piece that I'm going to use for the outer portion, you can see here I have a texture. And so that's just going to give me that texture on the outside of my band. I've done my rough cut and now I need to smooth this out and file this. To cut this out, because you want to use a jeweler saw, it would be actually very difficult for you to get into this area right here with a set of shears and make sure that you get that curve really well. So we want to use a jeweler saw and in this I'm going to use a 3 aught blade. And you can use whatever else you want but you want to make sure that you get two to three teeth per um, the surface of your metal that you're cutting. So if I put this here on my metal like this, that's what I want to see. I want to use a little bit of lubricant on my saw blade, so I'll just get that on there. And I want to follow along my line, but I don't want to get too close to my line. I want to make sure that I'm on the outside of that, and then I can always file down into that line. The other thing I want to do is make sure I'm using the entire length of my saw blade. So my frame just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and all I am doing here is moving this. When you get to one of those corners, you want to just keep your blade moving up and down as you turn your piece, and that will allow you to make that corner. When you're sawing this, you want to make sure that you stay on the outside of the line. You want to be as close to the line as you can so you have less filing work to do, but you definitely want to stay on the outside of that line because if you come inside, it's going to change the dimensions of things. Once you have this all cut out, then you're going to want to use your files. So in this case, I have a half round file. I'm going to position this on my, my bench block and use that so that I can begin to file this. Smooth it all down. You want to get it down to your lines and you want to check your measurements. So here, this is our inner band and we should have 12 millimeters from one end to the next and six and a half millimeters here in the center as well as uh, 58 millimeters for the, for the outer dimension. Now the key here on this, when we are taking this and we're filing it, the big key is to do a little bit at a time, check your measurements, kind of see where you are. So in this case, I'm at 7.3 and I need to get it down to 6.5. So I have quite a bit of ways to go on there. Then here at the very tips, the ends, I need to be at 12 millimeters and I'm at 12.45. So I have a little bit there to go on that end. 12.58, so I have a little bit to go on these ends as well. So I'm going to just very carefully, I don't want to take it too far, so do a little bit, check your measurement, do a little bit, check your measurement. The key here is small movements, check your precision so that you don't end up going beyond. Once we have our pieces filed out, cut out completely, then we want to take our calipers and just double check our measurements. So we want about 6.5 here in the middle, we're pretty close there, and we want 12 here on the ends, and I'm spot on 12 there, and spot on 12 there. That is for your inner band. Then I also want to check that outer measurement and I should be, I believe, at 58 for this, and I'm 57.95, so a little under, but I'm close enough for that one for sure. The outer band needs to be 61 millimeters. And again, five and a half here in the middle. And we're good there, and we want 13 millimeters. So I'm a smidge over here on the ends, a little bit on the outer piece, and I'm not too worried about that yet because some of that will change as we get working with this. 
you'll notice that these are bow shaped a little bit. And that is because it's going to flare open at the top. It's going to be wider at the top than it is at the bottom. But it's not very comfortable to wear a ring that is more than even 10 millimeters wide. So the six and a half is going to make it so it's very, very comfortable. So now that I've got the measurements on both of my pieces, I'm, I'm happy with the way they are, where they're looking, and now it is time to form this and get this soldered closed. We are going to be working with the inner band first. So what happens is we want to turn this around so that it meets up completely and we can solder this close. We want to work here at the very end. Now this ring is going to be approximately a size seven by the time we are done, but I don't want to start forming at a size seven. I want to start forming at like a four or a five and get it closed a little bit tighter. So what I'm going to do is just work this here on my mandrel just right here at the very end and you'll see that I'm just kind of curving it around. And I want to come about halfway so again I want to make maybe like a little U-turn basically and we're going to do the other side now. All right, I want to do as much of this forming with my fingers as I possibly can. And this is where we're really going to see how well we did in getting this seam straight, whether we're filing it or we've sawed it, whatever the case is going to be. This is where we'll see if it's straight or not because you have to have a perfectly flush seam here in order for it to solder properly. I want to use my fingers and my hands as much as possible to get this seam closed. And I want to not use tools as much as possible because one, I don't really want to harden the metal too much, although it's not going to matter because we're going to solder this. But the other thing is I don't want to put in tool marks that I'm later going to have to remove. So do as much with your fingers as you possibly can. Use the natural spring back that it has to hold itself together. What we're looking for is a seam that if I hold this up to the light, I should not be able to see any light come through this. So I'm going to spend just a second here cleaning this up, making sure that it's nice and flush, and then I'm going to solder it closed. One of the key things with this project is very intentional moving. So you want to do things, evaluate it, make sure things match up where you want them to be or whatever else the case might be. So I'm very happy with how my seam looks here. It's closed nice and tight. But I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just going to go over this seam just to make certain that everything is nice and smooth. What I do on one side, I wanna do on the other. So flip it over and come back in from the other direction. I use a little bit of scotch Bright just to make sure everything's looking good. We've got a nice even surface here. Take a little bit of time, make sure everything looks nice and tight. Blow things out if you need to. And I believe we are now actually ready to solder this seam. When you get ready to solder this, we want to do kind of a protective coating on this to help prevent some of the fire scale. I want to do this, especially in my case where my ring is sterling silver and it is definitely prone or more prone to getting fire scale or fire stain. And that's just where we get that copper oxide just below the surface of the the silver itself and you can kind of see it. it looks almost like your silver is bruised. So one of the things that I like to do is I'll make a mixture of boric acid and denatured alcohol. And hopefully you guys can see here on the video, it's about half of the boric acid and another half of the denatured alcohol. And so what I do is I'll just kind of mix this in together and this is going to create basically a fire coat now you have a couple of different torches that you can choose from to do this project. The one that Alan really likes to use in his studio is the Mecco Midget. Now I don't have that. It is a fuel oxy mixed torch. So you have one line that's oxygen and one line that's fuel, whether that's natural gas or propane or whatever else. 
In my studio, I do happen to have an acetylene air torch. And what that means is that it pulls the oxygen in through the air and mixes it right at the torch head itself. And that's what I'm going to be using. With a mixed fuel torch, you do have a couple of different types of flames that you can use. One is a reducing flame. This is going to be where you have more fuel. Basically, it's going to look a lot like what you would get with a lighter. You have a lot of fuel, very little oxygen. You have a neutral flame. That's where you have equal parts pretty close to oxygen and fuel and then you have an oxidizing fuel or flame the oxidizing flame sounds really loud harsh and sharp it's kind of a hissy flame and this is where you have a lot of oxygen this is going to be a very hot flame now in this project Alan suggests that you use more of an oxidizing flame right around the seam not on the solder itself right around the seam to get that solder to flow so you're kind of in flow it and then you're out because I'm using a fuel air torch it's going to take just a little bit longer and again like I said I don't really have that much control over the flame type itself for this ring we are going to be using hard solder only now the reason for using hard solder only for everything that I show you is so that when you decide what you want to do for the top of the ring then you can go in with a lower melting point solder say medium or easy and be able to easily do some of your embellishments without running the risk of ruining the solder seams that you have already created so what I'm going to do is just take my ring dip it into this boric acid wash set it out here on my pumice make sure you get this closed back up nice and tight i'm going to take my torch maybe i'm going to take my torch and just ignite that and it might be kind of hard to see here on the screen because it's really light but there's a little green flame that burns that burns off that alcohol and then what i'm left with is a nice coating of boric acid on my ring to help protect it from getting fire scale. So I'm going to take this and put this into my third hand with my seam facing up. Now I'm going to take some of my flux and I'm going to flux right here along my seam both on the top and on the bottom. I don't need a whole lot here, especially since I already have that fire coat around the rest of my piece. Then I'm going to place my solder on here. Now one thing you are going to notice in this project, we are going to use a lot of solder. And it's actually going to be a lot more solder than what you expect. So don't be afraid of putting on too much. Now that I have that done, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to heat up this ring. And I'm going to heat up the sides of my ring. Try to avoid putting the, the flame right onto the solder itself because we just want the solder to flow when it has the whole piece up to temperature. So I'm going to get my torch going. And I'm just going to come in here and gently heat up my ring. Until that solder flows. Once my solder flows, I am going to look at the bottom of the seam and make sure that it's gone all the way around. Notice that I'm right here with my pick ready to go. So there goes my solder. I'm going to uh, just kind of brush it along and make sure it goes down into that seam. So right now I have a lot of solder right here. It's kind of big and blobby on the on the top of my piece and that is just fine. And I'm pretty confident at this point that my solder flowed all the way through. So I'm going to release this from my clamps. Use my tweezers. I want to look at the bottom of my ring and look along the seam in here and just make sure that everything is flowed all the way to the edges and this actually looks really, really good. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. I'm going to quench this and then I'm going to take this and put it into the pickle. Once it's out of the pickle, I will scotch bright and file down any excess solder that I have. 
Now that I've pulled my ring out, everything is looking really good. I have a beautiful solder seam on the underside. Everything looks good here on the top. There is a bit of excess solder, so you can either use a file or you can use some sanding sticks, whichever you prefer. And I wanna take that, so that excess solder down. In addition to using a file or a sanding stick to clear up that solder seam, you also want to go over things with your Scotch-Brite. And you wanna do this for the entire surface of the ring so you can really see what is on your ring. If we have any fire scale or if we have any blemishes, you know, things like that. So it's always a good idea or a habit to get into using the Scotch-Brite to kind of clean up your rings or the surfaces of your metal before you go on to the next step. So the next thing that I need to do, if you can see here, my ring is not currently round. So we need to round out our ring. Bring in my ring mandrel, place it onto my mandrel, and I'm just going to use the hammer this is a nylon hammer to just kind of smooth this out. Remember, if you do it in one direction, you need to do it in the other, so take it off, bring it back on. And we should now be pretty good. That's beautifully round. Looking inside, I do see that I need to clean up my solder seam here. So this can be done with a number of different tools, either on your flex shaft, a round file, or a half round file, you know, just whatever you need to do to get into this to clean up that solder seam. One of the tools that I have here in my studio that I like to get or use to get on the inside of rings is a cone with sandpaper adhered to it. So I'm going to just put this on here and use the cone to come in and clean up that solder seam. Again, make sure I turn this over and do it from the other direction as well. And once you're happy with that, again, I'm just going to use my scotch Brite in here to clear this out and give a more uniform surface. And now we're ready for the next phase. Our next step is to find the outer dimension or diameter of our piece. So I'm going to pull in my calipers one more time. And this time I'm going to measure the outside of the ring. So this is about 19 point, let's see, about 19.3, between 19.3 and 19 point. So this is between 19.3 and 19.4 for the outside. Now I'm going to tighten this up just a first second because what I wanna do is bring this onto my ring mandrel and find out what size this correlates to. So in this case, this looks like about a nine and a half. So what I'm going to do now is I want to shape the outside of the ring to just below that nine and a half so that then we can slip it onto the outside of the inner ring. Now this time, instead of shaping it from the ends like we did before, I'm actually going to put this on here about the size eight. I wanna leave these ends straight. So I want to come in and just bring this around like so. And what I'm going to do is I wanna test fit my ring on the inside. So you can see here, we have a pretty decent fit down here at the bottom, but it flares way out on the sides. So I'm going to bring it back onto here and I'll bring my sides in just a little bit. Bring it back off, insert my ring again, and see what our fit looks like.
We're looking pretty decent. There is a little bit of a bubble down here at the bottom, so I want to address that, and that's going to be done by opening this up just a little bit. And we're about there. So I want to just fiddle with this a little bit for a sec and just make sure I've got a nice good fit into this. I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking right now. So now I'm going to bind this together and get ready to solder it all together. To bind this, what I have here is some 28 gauge binding wire and I have doubled it over and I'm going to just kind of twist this up. And this is going to give me a thicker, kind of a stronger binding wire that then I can hold my piece together. And this part of the project is where we really get into doing some of that precision work that I was telling you about. Where we do a little movement, we check it. We do another little movement and we check it again. Because right now is really when it's going to be important that we have things precise. So what I've done here is I've put the two rings together. I'm holding them with my, my thumb and forefinger. I've slipped the binding wire through, and now I'm going to come in here and give this a twist, like so. Now, notice that it's not tight yet, and that is done by, again, grabbing it with like your pliers or something else. And I don't want it entirely too tight So I don't want this entirely too tight because I want to be able to slip a binding wire through that little section right there when we get our piece to the right size. So I'm going to snip this away. So that now we can concentrate on the top part of our ring. This is again where I was telling you, you have to really be precise. So we want our two sides to come up in a parallel motion. And I only need, I want the top here to be, uh, well, let's see, I want the top here to be 12.4. So if I use the inside of my calipers here, I can see that I am 12.71 here. I'm going to come down to the other end and 12.78. So I'm really close, but it's still not where I need it to be. So I'm going to use my fingers, just kind of bring this in a little bit and take that measurement again. 11.57 and 11.50. So I came in just a little bit too much Spring that open. 12.34 and 12.11. So I'm off ever so slightly. And what I can do then is I can bring in my pliers and just give a little bit of a squeeze here and try to adjust that. 12.7. And 12 point, we are right there at 12.4. And there we go, 12.4. So I wanna look at all positions of this ring and make sure everything is where it should be. Okay, I wanna make sure that it's even over here and here. And things are looking pretty good. Everything seems to be parallel, so that's a good thing. And now we're ready to take our next piece of binding wire. What I'm going to do is slip it through that opening that we had down here at the bottom. Slip that on through here. Bring it around to the top. And here, I'm gonna do something a little different. I want to bring this in and bend it down underneath the opening of this ring so that when we get it into our 12.4 position, it's going to hold that for me. And again, I'm going to twist this. And we want to check our positioning again. So I t 
tightened it up a little too much. So push that out. So, all right. So now we're back to 12.4. And a 12.4. Because our metal is going to want to relax and kind of move, I want to just twist this down so that we hold our box here into place. Now that we have this, it's time to clip this a little bit away and we are ready to solder the ring. So this next step, I'm going to be using my charcoal block. First thing I want to do is again, run my ring through this wash, our boric acid wash. we we'll get that part of the flame going. So we now have our fire coat on here as well. We are going to apply flux to both sides of our ring where we want that solder to flow. For this next part, we want to solder this down here together. I don't need to worry about having things up here and we might even find that the ring wants to kind of pull together, which is why I tucked that binding wire into place up here at the top so that it wouldn't pull it in too much. So the next thing then that I need to do is place my solder on this. And at this point, we're really just kind of tacking this piece together. So you don't need a whole ton of solder. Uh, the ring is actually going to have quite a bit of soldering done on it when we attach the outer sides. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and flow this solder. And our solder flowed in there nicely, so we are going to uh, quench, pickle, and rinse and dry this again and clean it once more with our Scotch-Brite. The next thing that we need to do is create an even plane here on this side and also on this side. This can be done with a larger wide file. So you can see here my file is not quite as wide as this and that's okay, but what you want to do is get it positioned in here so that that way we can get everything all nice and aligned. And you can easily see where your file has actually hit your piece, where you have high spots versus low spots. So in this case, my outer bound is a high spot. So we would just continue to work this until we have it nice and smooth. Now another thing you can do too is use a sanding board where you could do that as well. The thing you're going to want to keep in t uh, mind, you don't want them to be less than 12.4 millimeter. Now our goal here is to get everything even. We want a 14 millimeter box here by the time all is said and done. So when you take the 0.8 and you add it to 12.4 for the both sides, that's going to give you 14 millimeters. So we want to verify that we have the 12.4 here on the inside and then we also want to, you know, and you want to make sure you've got it on both edges here. And then you're going to measure here as well to make sure that we have that um, here on the ends also. So we have a little ways to go on this one. I've got 13.7 here and I have 13.11 here. So I have a little bit of ways to take down, which is good, but we want to take this also to 12.4. We are looking for a, a perfect 14 millimeter square here at the top, and that's our goal. 
So whatever you need to do, and like I said, you want to just take this little by little, and you're going to want to watch every little thing that happens. So again, here I'm watching high spots come out along with low spots. You can move things around. But continue to check as you go along and make your adjustments uh, each time so that you don't take something too far and not be able to come back from that. You might also find it handy to use a pair of half round pliers to hold on to your pieces up against the bench block for easier filing. For the next section, now that everything is even, I've checked my measurements, so we're even here. I'm even across here, so everything is looking really good and how I want it at this point in time. I've now cut another uh, sheet of 0.8 millimeters, which is 20 gauge. So now what I need to do is get this soldered into place. So before I do that, I am going to do again my boric acid wash to help protect this from any fire scale or anything like that. So I'm going to do both the back plate as well as my ring. So I'm going to apply flux to kind of where I want that solder to flow. So just out here around this ring, I'm going to do inside the ring. And I'm also going to do inside along the top here. Also going to do along inside here along the top. Now, if you remember, I told you we are going to use a lot of solder. And we are going to use a lot more than what you originally think we should use. And that is because we have all of this area in here that this solder needs to flow. And so we want it to be able to flow up into that. So even here along the top, I am going to place quite a few pieces of solder in this. And we want to place a ton of solder on the inside. If you think you have enough, add like five more pieces. Okay, so now that I've got my piece thoroughly soldered, or you know, the solder is placed, now it is time to actually get it soldered into place. All right, so now we are ready to get this soldered. Make sure you have your solder pick in hand. Um, I want to heat the entire piece here. And this is a much larger piece, so it could take a little while. And we're just about to flow and there it's starting to flow. So what I want to do is I want to take this solder pick and just make sure that we get the solder bead all the way around our piece. I want to make sure that there's a nice seam all the way around. So use that pick to your advantage here. I want to make sure that I've come down all the way along and I have a beautiful join there. I can see that all the way across. So now I'm going to quench it, pickle it, clean it, and on to the next step. Now that this has been soldered, it's been pickled, and I drilled a hole into the back plate inside of this ring. So the next thing that I need to do is get my, my saw blade inserted into this. And I'm going to pierce out the center. So I want to not go all the way to the edge of the ring and I obviously need to be careful not to take off or nick this outer edge either. 
So we want to just leave just ever so slight of a border there. But I don't want to leave too much, otherwise I have to sit and file that all away. Once I have the inner portion cut out, I also want to cut out the outer portion. Again, leaving probably about half a millimeter edge around it. Depending on how you want your top, you can either trim off part of this now or you can leave it longer. I am going to trim off a good portion of mine at this point. And now we're ready to clean up this other edge again and solder it onto the other side of our back plate. So once again, I'm going to take my back plate and dip it into my boric acid wash, get a fire coat on it, as well as the ring itself. Once that is done, I'm going to position my ring onto the back plate. And again, inside of this ring, I'm going to place all of my solder, but first I need to apply some flux. I want to make sure I get flux inside and once again, I'm going to fill this in with more solder than I think I need. Once all of our solder is into place, then it's time to get it going. Again, I'm just going to concentrate on the outside of the ring to warm everything all up at the same time. And our solder is beginning to flow, so again, I'm just going to take my pick and help to move that solder along so that we get in a good seam. And it looks like we have a really good seam. Again, I'm going to quench this. So you want to just take a little while to verify, make sure everything looks good, everything is soldered down, we don't have any holes or pits. Some of that won't really be able to be seen until we pull it back out of the pickle, but in this case, everything looks really good. So I'm going to put this back into the pickle, drill another hole, and again, pierce out the center. So now I've already taken the time and I've pierced out the inside of of both sides of the ring. I've taken off that outer plate. And so now what I need to do is both take down the edges on this ring to make them so that they're nice and even. And what you want to have, you want to have a nice smooth transition as you come around this curve up here and into the top. <coughs> Now because I have a design here, I want to be very careful about getting my file into that and removing or damaging that. To do the inside of my ring, I'm going to hold it here on my bench pin from underneath and then I'll use the, the rounded part of either a crossing file or a half round file. Again, you want to do little bits and pieces and check it because you don't want to go too deep and too far. Make any adjustments that you need and continue on. I now have the rough finish on my ring done. So I've gone through and I've cleared out the inside for the most part. There still needs to be a little bit more. I can see some solder seams in here. So I need to keep working on that. And then I need to do the final high polish inside. On the outsides here, I also need to continue to do my polish. But I wanna look at this and make sure everything looks nice and even all the way around. You can also use your slide calipers here to get the measurements in different areas to make sure 
that you're pretty even all the way around on that. Now, if I look here at the top and I take the inside of my calipers, and I'm gonna come up here at the very, very top, I get 11.21, and 11.41, so we're not, well, 11.3. So we're not too far off there, and if I come in here onto the sides, I've got 12.02, and I have 12 point, uh, looks like 12.07, so we're really close right there. So my two outer edges are really close, and again, I can even check it out here on the edges, because remember, we were looking for 14, and I'm 14.02 there, and here I am 14 spot on. So my outside edges on, on this are perfect. Those are great, but on the inside here, or where my my band comes up and around. I'm not quite there yet. And really all that needs to happen is I just need to bring this down just a little bit. And I can do that with a file or I can do it on, you know, while sanding on some papers. So either way that you choose to do this, you can do that. And we want to, again, we want to just have that nice square up here on the top. So I would continue to do this and continue to check my measurements, make sure that everything is where it needs to be, and kind of go from there. So we're getting a little closer here now, and just a little bit closer. So I have about another half millimeter to go on this until we've got the nice square edge. So your final goal is to get a nice polish on the inside, make sure everything looks good out here. So you notice that on this one I just polished the edges, left the, the inside of my pattern a little bit like that, polished the inside of my ring. And you also wanna make certain that you've got that measurement correct. Now at this point, if it looks like your ring is unfinished, that's probably because it is. So the goal of this project is not necessarily to end up with a finished ring. However, that is your next task to do. So the goal for this project was so that you could learn the skills to create this box ring. And now it is your turn to take it to the next level and finish off that top. If you would like some suggestions, just do a Google search for Alan Revere box ring samples and you will see all kinds of different ways that people have finished this because this was one of the projects in the Alan Revere Academy. So if you did like the eight week, the 16 week, or even if you did the six month program, this would have been one of the projects that you would have done except that you would have taken it a little bit further. Now, like I've said before, in these projects, I'm not a master goldsmith. I haven't been through all the training or anything like that. In fact, I'm working through this book with you. This is the second ring that I have done personally. So if I make some mistakes, I hope you guys forgive me because like I said, just like you, I'm learning along right with you. If you're looking for any of the tools that I've used in this video, just check the links below in the description of the video. And if you guys like the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notifications. As always, I look forward to hearing any of your comments down below. So if you have different ways that you would like to share that you are doing some of these techniques, we'd love to hear about them. Just leave it down in the description below and I'll be sure to answer you and get back to you soon if you have any questions or anything else. Thanks so much for watching guys and I will catch you next time.